The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Turn a switch, you pump a pedal, an electric spark encounters acid. A flash, an explosion, a burst of energy, a thing that stood still now leaps forward. In a real sense, it lives, nourished by fluids, fed to the right places at the exact split second. An inanimate object, an automobile. But how different, in theory, is an animate object say, a human being. We are also sustained by fluids, miraculously timed by the interaction of electricity and acid. Car and driver. You both live. Mr. O'Brien, I want to help you. I'm telling you the truth, Doctor. You want to keep working, don't you? I have to. Well, then, you have to... I mean, you, you can't go around saying that the bus you drive actually has feelings, emotions, in fact, has life as we know it. But, Doctor, it's true. Whether or not it's true, you have to say so. But, Doctor, I'm offering you a way out. What's that? Just keep your mouth shut. Our mystery drama, The Night Shift, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Time Magazine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You walk quickly into the office, but there's no hiding it. According to the clock on the wall... You are 23 minutes late. You say to the office manager, I missed the bus. And he thinks, well, day in, day out, week in, week out, always punctual. Forget it. Yes, day in, day out, week in, week out, and today, for the first time, you missed the bus. But, of course, it really doesn't occur to you to think, did the bus miss you? Well, where shall we begin? Why not in Eddie O'Brien's house? A week ago, Tuesday, at midnight, Margie O'Brien has just turned off the TV. Oh, this picture isn't going anyplace, Eddie. Come on, let's get to bed. After a while. Well, it'll be 6 a.m. before you know it. All right. Well, you do have to get your rest, don't you? Yeah, sure. Well? Uh, come on, Eddie, I want to turn off the light. Go ahead. Wait a minute, where are you going? I'll be back in a while. Oh, what do you mean you'll be back in a while? Where are you going? Where do you think? I don't know what to think. Oh, every night after midnight for the past week, you've been running out of here. Where are you going? I keep telling you, to the garage. Why? To check out the bus. Oh, what does that mean? Just what I said. I'm checking out the bus. But why? Because it's my bus. No, it's not. It's the company's bus. And you don't get paid to check it out. Your job is to drive it. I'll be back. But you're not going to the garage. Oh, you don't fool me. You've got someone. You've got somebody else on the side. Look, I told you where I'm going. I'm going to the garage to see my bus. You'll see it six hours from now when you shape up for work. Don't wait up for me. You won't get away with this, Eddie. I won't stand for it. Get away with what? And what is it you won't stand for? This phony story. Going down to the garage to see your bus. But it's true. What's her name? 2792. Funny thing about wives. Whenever you do something they can't understand, right away they get the idea you're falling around with another woman. I don't know about other women. Margie was always enough for me. The answer is, I can't explain it. I mean, but who would believe it? It's the bus I drive. The new bus just came out of the line three months ago. I walked into the garage one morning, and Joe Collins, the dispatcher, says to me, 
Hey, look at what we got for you today, Eddie. Yeah. Is that all you can say? Yeah? Hey, ain't she pretty? What's pretty about a bus? Ah, you got no poetry in your soul, Eddie. She's just a bus. A hunk of steel, aluminum, glass, and rubber. What are you building? Well, if that's all a bus is, why do we refer to it as she and her? Why not just say it? <laughs> A guy was talking about it on the TV the other night. We, we call ships and buses and planes and boats she because we see them as mother figures. You're kidding. Yeah, it's because they they protect us with their bodies. Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm not crazy. He's crazy. We call them things she because, uh... I mean, well, because, uh... Because they're beautiful. And you're crazy, too. Oh, look at her. So graceful. Hey, ain't you going to be proud to drive her? I'll drive a horse and wagon. Just give me the money at the end of the week. Well, she was pretty. And even more important from my angle, she... Well, she handled like... Like she was a sports car. Here she was, this enormous bus. And she could... Okay, I'll say the word because... What do I got to lose? You're going to think I'm crazy anyhow. She could dance her way through traffic. I used to hate to show up for work in the morning because it was the beginning of nine hours of torture. Is that too strong a word? Well, why not? Being irritated, nervous, frustrated. I was all right at the start of the run. Does this bus go to Carrollton? We sure do. And you can get the shuttle there to Glen's Corner. Thank you. But along about the last hour, I was sputtering like a firecracker. Yeah, I've changed you a dollar. What's the matter? Can't you read? Exact fare, 50 cents. It says so in front of the bus. I'd stew and simmer with it. Everything could set me off. Traffic, pedestrians, cops. I'd get home and she'd be no help either. Eddie, let's eat out tonight, huh? Oh, for crying out loud. Eddie, I wasn't feeling well today. Yeah, I don't feel well any day. Oh, now don't stop talking to me about your job. You don't have any idea of how I know all about it. And you know what I say? Quit. Quit? Yeah. Just say to your boss, I quit. And do what? Oh, there are plenty of jobs. But I don't know how to do most of them. Then learn. Go to school. At my age. Besides, you know what kind of pension plan we got? Oh, honey, I want just a little more out of my life. Like what? Let me put it this way. I would like a husband who, when he comes home every night, isn't always tired. I'll stay home. You go out and get a job. Oh, can't we ever talk sense? Today's husbands stay home. Wives go out and have careers. You're so smart, you know so much, you could do better than me. Oh, Eddie, if I were you, I'd just shut up. I'd be getting the better part of that bargain. An hour to clean the house, an hour to do the shopping. Eddie, I'm telling you right now. An hour to cook supper. I'm warning you. After all, it isn't as if we have kids. You're going to be sorry, Eddie. Yeah? Why am I going to be sorry? How am I going to be sorry? I don't know yet, Eddie. But I'll find a way. Married 12 years. What happened to her? I fell for her originally because... Well, because she was so pretty. She was a lot of fun. Okay, she's still pretty, but fun. Nag, nag, nag all day long. And why? I face her with it. I say to her, what do you want? Look around you. See what other women have to live with you. You got a husband who doesn't drink, doesn't chase, doesn't gamble, doesn't smack you around. Oh, yeah. I married an angel. I don't hold on to my money. Everything we got is in a joint account. What do you want? Oh, nothing. And so, that's how it always ends up. With nothing. So that morning, I took out the bus. My new bus for the first time. I know I'm getting to the bus in a kind of roundabout way, but I got plenty of time. I'm not going any place. When they sent me here, at first I thought I'd go crazy. But I realize now that nobody's really going anyplace. I mean, rush, hurry, scurry, hustle, bustle. In the end, you and I are going to meet in the same place, right? Well, I sat down in the driver's seat. I turned the ignition key on. I put her in reverse. I backed into the street. I straightened her out and I headed down the block. Never, never in all my life, and I drove cars, trucks, anything with an engine that moves on wheels, never, 
never was it like this. She didn't roll down the street. She floated. Not the way you float on water, but the way you're... Well, I went to the dictionary to look for a word, and, and, and I found it. The way you're wafted on a cloud. She was a living thing. She knew what she was doing. She drove herself. She saw the stop. She gauged the traffic. And once, I swear, once I was ready to go through a red light, and she gently began to slow down. The nine hours passed as if it were all a beautiful dream. On my last trip, I passed by the garage to turn her over to my nightman. I hated to do it because, uh, all right, what do I got to lose? I hated to do it because I felt, I felt she was mine, all mine. And I couldn't stand a share with another man. I know, I know, I'm crazy. Anyhow, my night man was waiting. Hey, gee, look what we got here, 2792. Joe says the new heaps are in. She handles like a dream, Jerry. Just look at her. She's beautiful. Ah, give her six weeks. She'll be dented and banged up. The windows will be filthy. The outside will be caked with mud. Never. <laughs> All them juvenile delinquent kids will slash the seats. It'll maybe bust the window. Don't say that. What are you running a fever about? Listen, Sherry, you don't have to push her. <laughs> what? what are you talking about? I know you, Jerry. You got a heavy foot, and you ride the clutch. You don't have to with... with... 2792. Hey, Eddie... You're a great guy in many respects, but well, listen, I wish you'd quit being a company man. No, I'm only trying to show you that you don't... You're trying to what? Trying to save him money? So they put in a new clutch. What do you care? Some money out of your pocket? Oh, it's just a... Yeah? Nothing. Nothing. The nothing people say when they mean everything. Except... I didn't know just yet what I meant. Well, the next morning I showed up for work, and it rained the night before, and there was mud all over her. So I said to the dispatcher, Hey, Joe, this bus has to be washed. Yeah, I know. Well, so if you know, why don't you do it? What are you talking about, Eddie? You know we can only have the buses washed twice a week. Yeah, but this one's filthy. Yeah, she ain't that bad. I'm not taking her out like this. Huh? Let me get the hose. I'll wash it down myself. Hey, you can't do that. Who says so? Uh, in the first place, you ain't maintenance. You're a driver. And second, you're due on the south straight in two minutes. Now you just saddle and ride. And that's when it started. The going out at midnight. Do you understand? My bus. She needed to be taken care of. And Well, at midnight, the garage would be deserted. Nobody would be around to interfere with me as I tended to my bus. I would wash her carefully, and soon she'd be shining and spotless. But after the first week, I saw that she was also hurt. How'd you get that dent in the left rear paddle, Jerry? Oh, come on, Eddie. You can't even see it. How did it happen? It's nothing. You don't hear Joe Collins complain, do you? How did it happen? What are you getting so excited about? Talk to me, Jerry, or I'll knock you into the middle of next week. Hey, 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 hey. You are ready to put up your hands. What for, Eddie? Why? What happened? I cut a corner too sharp. I caught a bumper on a taxi. He had a small scratch. I had a small dent. Both of us figured it would be better to keep it quiet. Don't you ever do that again. Do what again? Put another mark on that bus. Eddie, tell me something. What's this concern uh, you and that bus? And another thing, you are riding the clutch. And you jackrabbit a lot when you start. Oh, come on. I can hear it. I can detect signs of it. Uh, Eddie, you talk like this here. You can scare a guy. I, I mean, you I got... hope I'm scaring you, Jerry. Scaring you into treating this bus decently because... Yeah? Because if you don't, I'm going to kill you. Why do men kill... There's an extensive literature on the subject. We have seen that men will kill for love, money, power, revenge. In short, all the emotions, all the practicalities. But has history recorded anyone who killed the cause of a bus? Stand by. We may be in store for a fabulous first. 
which will occur in our second act. All right. Why do sailors, airmen, trainmen, drivers refer to their vehicles as she? How easy it would be to get bogged down in all kinds of sexual symbolism. Why don't we just say a boat, a machine, a truck, a train, a plane, all these things are she because the truth is I don't know either. We could arrive at the answer in the second act, which is about to unfold. Well, Eddie? Well, what? Well, it's midnight. You're still dressed. No signs of getting ready for bed, so... I guess you're going out again tonight. That's right. To the garage, no doubt. That's where I go? To wash down the bus. Yes. Uh, funny thing, I... I never thought it would happen to me. Now, Margie, don't get started it with that. to other women. Some of them get a divorce... Some of them keep their mouths shut and pretend everything's okay. Margie. And then there are some women who decide to get even. You know what I mean? Oh, for crying out loud, Margie. What sauce for the goose? Will you listen to me? An eye for an eye. I'm going to the garage. That's all I'm doing is I'm going to the garage. Well, I really don't know what I want to do yet, Eddie. I haven't decided how I'm going to handle it. I'll be right back. Oh, no rush, Eddie. As long as you're having fun, take your time. Enjoy it. Margie, you're crazy. Don't keep her waiting. Margie, I'm going to the garage to fix up my bus. Okay. Okay, Eddie, I'll play along. Don't keep it waiting. Some kids had slashed a seat. There were chewing gum patches on the floor and papers and dust. I spent more than an hour working on it. And at the end, well, at least she was a respectable looking again. I left the garage, and I noticed a woman walking toward the corner. She was about my age, give or take somewhere around 40. Kind of slender, not at all bad looking. And I remembered seeing her practically every night. I wondered what she was doing alone on the street at this hour in this neighborhood. I mean, I wasn't trying to start anything, I, but I said, good evening. Oh, actually, it's good morning. <laughs> That's right. Uh... You live around here? Mm, the house on the corner. Kind of dangerous for a woman to be out alone at this time of the night, don't you think? Oh, there's no question about it, but I... Oh, I'm restless. I was hoping to talk to you. I've been wanting to for weeks. Well, you could have done that any time. Uh, perhaps, but I've been brought up where the gentleman must talk first. Well, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? I wanted to thank you. For what? For making my little midnight walks possible. Well, what have I got to do with it? As you say, it's not a good neighborhood for a woman to be alone on the street at this hour. And so I would sit by my window. And then, some time ago, I noticed that you would go to the bus garage just down the block, stay for an hour or so. And just knowing there was someone respectable within call. How do you know I'm respectable? Oh, you must be. You work for a living. You evidently go to the garage to fix the buses. You're a mechanic, aren't you? No, I'm a driver. Anyhow, I, I'm not really alone, so I thought it was safe to take a walk. And it has been. I'm glad I could be of help. Would you care for a cup of coffee? Oh. Would you see, I'm, I'm, I'm married. Why did I say that? It's really insulting. It means that I thought that you oh, were making a place. Oh, it's not important. We're all very complicated. We like to think we're so logical. Actually, inside, it's really anarchy that we somehow manage to keep under control. Well, let me tell you why I said that. It isn't important. Yes, it is. It really is. I must explain it. Why not explain it over a cup of coffee? My wife is convinced that I've got a woman, another woman. Have you? No, but she doesn't believe me. When I tell her about the bus, she really flies off the handle. Why? Well, I told you how I feel about that bus. Doesn't it sound crazy? No. No? What you're saying is that 
that much as a living creature. Why not? Who can define what life is? That's it. That's it. You understand. Just like no two human beings are alike. The same goes with no two machines. It's the way they're they're put together. They have a they have a life. I hope you won't laugh. To laugh at someone's sincerely held belief is not only unkind, but stupid. Then you really do understand about my bus? I think you're an exceptional human being. Her name was Martha. Martha Wilson. And she was sweet, soft, sincere, easy to be with. So unlike Margie. So I meet her at the corner every night and we'd go up to her place for coffee. And I had no other ideas. Well, not at first, anyhow. I would have been happy if things stayed the way they were. But I was driving my bus one afternoon when I heard it. That noise in the transmission, not too loud, and maybe you wouldn't notice it if you weren't listening for it, but it was a sign to me that there was trouble ahead. Jerry was to blame. He was abusing my bus. And the daughter, your guy could set his watch by you. I don't want you to drive this bus, Jerry. What are you talking about? It's my bus. No, it's mine. What do you want to be legal? It's the company's bus. I told you, treat this bus carefully, gently. Ah, why don't you go soak your head? Okay, that did it. Stop! I don't care who started it, Eddie. I won't have any fights on the job. Listen, Joe. No, Eddie. I'm overlooking too much already. Yeah? What? Look, you want to sneak in at night, and for no pay you want to work in your bus? Okay. But it's got to be under your hat, and there can't be any fights. I don't want Jerry driving my bus. Now, just a second. In the first place, it ain't your bus. And in the second place, we have to get 17 and a half hours worth of service out of her every day. I don't want anybody else driving her second ship. Eddie, what's come over you? I'll be the night shift myself. You mean pull two shifts? That's exactly what I mean. Forget it. What? What are you, kid, Eddie? We got a contract. No one's allowed to work two shifts. Even so, a, a state law won't let one guy do 17 hours behind a wheel. Jerry is killing my bus. Don't you understand? Jerry is killing oh, my Eddie, bus. Eddie, relax, huh? Your bus is still way ahead on any schedule of maintenance and depreciation. Now, why don't you go home, get a good night's sleep? Well, here it is. Thirteen minutes to twelve. And our devoted Eddie O'Brien is off on his mission. Eddie O'Brien, that dedicated driver of the bus. Good night. And give my regards to, uh, Martha. Martha? <laughs> it's funny how you always went for girls whose names begin with M. I'm Margie. Before me, you were going with that girl, Marion. Now, after me, you've got a Martha. What are you saying? I notice you don't deny it. Her name is Martha Wilson. There's absolutely nothing between us. Every night she meets you at that corner, and you go off to her apartment. All we do is drink coffee. Oh, that's such a lame excuse. Couldn't you do better? Listen, Margie. I guess she knows something I don't. Yes, she does. She knows how to trust a person. If I said to her I'm going to the garage to work on my bus, she'd never sneak out and follow me. I never even left the house. Then how do you know about it? You have a very good friend. Who told you? He told me for your good. Who told you? Jerry. Jerry? He's my friend? He's the best friend you have in the world. Let me tell you what Jerry did. Now, he walked in here last night after you walked out. Say, Jerry, you, you have a black eye. Where'd you get it? Eddie gave it to me. Why? I know Eddie 15 years. We were always pretty good friends. Mm -hmm. Until I married him instead of you. Uh, lately, we haven't seen too much of each other. Uh oh, you were always a good guy, Jerry. All you said to me was, one day you'll be sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's on days and I'm on nights. Now, I don't have a chance to socialize much. Well, it's quite possible you were right, Jerry. Now, yeah, believe me, I never really resented Eddie. I felt the better man won. It may be possible that I am sorry. What's wrong between you and Eddie? Oh. Would you believe a three-letter word? Bus. Uh, yeah, that bus. Tell me, what's with that bus? As 
search me. But you drive it, too. What, what kind of magic has it got? Magic? The bus is just a cover. For what? You should ask for who. Oh, I see. He doesn't have the right to cheat on you, Margie. You're the, you're the most wonderful girl I know. Oh, please, Jerry, not now. I, I, don't, I don't mind giving you up. If it was to a guy who could make you happier than I could. Who is she? I want you to be happy. Who is she? I've always loved you. I loved you enough to be happy when you threw me over for Eddie. Will you tell me who? It was because I wanted you to be happy, but you're not happy now. You, you can't be happy oh, now. Jerry, if you don't tell me who she is. Just, just tell me this. Huh? Is it a surprise to you? I mean, if there's another woman, isn't it something you knew in your heart all along? And, and what if I did? Are you to blame for any of it? Oh, what kind of question is that? Are you? I have to know. I... I love you, and I have to know if you can still make it right between you and Eddie, because if you can't, and it is over, I hope we're back where we started. Who is she, Jerry? Who is she, Eddie? Not what you think at all. She's just a kind, sweet, sympathetic lady. Everything I'm not. Margie, I swear to you, we, Martha Wilson and I, we have never so much... That's even worse. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, what have I done to you? You haven't done anything. Oh, please, please tell me, because because I love you. I know, and I love you, too. And I want you to meet Martha. Oh, no. Are you crazy? She can teach you something. Oh, let me hear this. How to, how to understand those things we cannot see, those forces we cannot feel. Eddie, don't, please. You don't understand that an object can be a living entity. Eddie, where did you get all this from? My bus is not a number, not just 2792, but a being. A being that can feel, that can respond. Eddie! Jerry drives her, too. He complains about her transmission or steering. It's because she doesn't respond to him. Oh, don't say any more. L- let me go. She me. resists him, but she knows I respect her, that I care for her. Oh, darling. And so she responds to me. Oh, Eddie. You, you need help. Margie... Doesn't it occur to you that maybe you need help? So far, I imagine, we have posed the basic conflicts that occur in our society. Especially the eternal one that exists between art and science. Or, put it this way, between the heart and the mind. Common sense insists that Eddie O'Brien is, to put it gently, a nut. Just remember that common sense always says that about all visionaries and creators. At first, we may have a different type of common sense revealed in Act Three. Scientists will tell you that the dividing line between what is animal and what is vegetable cannot really be clearly defined. So, if you go lower down the scale, the dividing line between what is animate and what is inanimate is also somewhat blurred. What is the answer? Is it something each one must seek for himself? In seeking for his particular answer, Eddie O'Brien is prepared to believe that even a bus is a living creature. Eddie, you talk to buses. Why is it that Martha Wilson can understand? Oh, darling, I- I'm willing to forget Martha Wilson. But you have to help me. You have to forget her, too. Why should I? She's a lovely person. Okay, Eddie. I won't say another word. <laughs> You just got to take Jerry off the night shift. And uh, look, Eddie... He's uh, killing the transmission. And the tires. Look at the tread on the right front. Eddie... The wheel's out of alignment. Yeah, I know. If you know, why don't you do something about it? Because it ain't bad enough yet. That's why. You can't let guys drive who don't know how to handle her. I want to talk to you. You're going to have to see a shriek. Who says so? Well, the contract says so. Section 18, paragraph 2. The physical and mental health of the driver being vital to the safe operation of the vehicle. Okay, okay, I know. Well, we have the right to insist on a visit to a psychiatrist. Why? Eddie, 
Don't make this tougher on both of us. You claim your bus has uh, human characteristics, Mr. O'Brien? No, Doctor. Then what is your problem? I don't have a problem. It's the people around me who have a problem. I say that bus 2792 lives. Lives? Ah, how? The way living things live. I mean, she... She? Look, why is it crazy? She has a motor, we have a heart. She circulates oil, we circulate blood. We burn food, she burns gas. And doesn't the same name hold true in both cases? Fuel? Oh, these are very apt generalities, Mr. O'Brien. Well, let me tell you how I can prove all this. Prove what? Prove that she... that she lives, that she responds, that she understands... Ride with Jerry when he drives her. And then ride with me. You're the better driver. Actually, I've been told you're the best driver in the garage. But uh, all this is beside the point. You have a problem. Can't I convince you I don't have a problem? Mr. O'Brien, you're a hard-working man. A good man. I find nothing physically wrong with you. Doctor, don't you understand... She's a living thing, even if that's true. Why should we be concerned with it? You're a kind person, Doctor, an intelligent person. What do you say? I'm only saying that everything has a useful life, and when it's over... Useful life? You use the word life? You agree with me about 2792 being alive. So how can I be crazy? Well, I didn't say you were crazy. For all I know, your bus is just as alive as you are. But being alive doesn't mean it's entitled to live. Well, what are you going to write down on your on your report? Well, that depends on you. You can't say I'm crazy. Mr. O'Brien, don't rock the boat. Unless, of course, you're prepared to jump overboard. That was my first experience with a head doctor. I've had lots more since. And I shall certainly have many more in my time to come. Let me check out the details of what happened immediately after. I took the bus out again. And I wanted to cry. Because she was no longer the beautiful thing I had seen that first morning. She was dirty and dented. Grimy, dingy. The tile on the floor was cracked in places. There were dirty spots that could no longer be removed. And even her heart. Her great beating heart. No longer pumped smoothly. She stuttered labored. She was in agony. And when I turned her over to Jerry, please, Jerry, be very good to her. Eddie, I want to tell you something, and you better listen. That tramp you've been running around with at night. One more word, Jerry, and I tell you... what? You won't catch me with that lucky sneak punch like the last time. Eddie, Margie loves you. You keep out of this. I can't. I love her. You always hated me because I'm the one she married. She's mad. You can't blame her. She wants to pay you back. She's willing to go away with me. But you can put a stop to it if you really love her. Oh, don't be so noble and self-sacrificing. She chose me 15 years ago. Now, if she wants to choose you, I won't stop her. It's true. It's true about you and this Marco Wilson. There's nothing to do with another woman. Why do people tie everything up with sex? It has to do with understanding what's in somebody's heart. Jerry, the clutch is gone. The clutch is okay. Treat that bus gently. Shift easily. Promise me, Jerry. Promise. Oh, you're crazy. I can see that now. Look, I am not going to let you ruin the rest of Margie's life. Easily, Jerry. She responds so beautifully when you treat her gently. Let go of my arm, you nut. He climbed into the driver's seat. And as if to spite me, it was as if he was trying to tear her heart out. I couldn't go home. I couldn't face Margie. I couldn't face the arguments, the complaints, the the lack of understanding. How does it happen? How do two people who were so in love suddenly... It's because we change. We don't know it, but we, we change. Or maybe what we were is no longer what we are. And so I went where I could always find somebody who was what I needed now. What did the doctor say? In a nutshell... Don't rock the boat. He's a good doctor. He knows his limits. I wish I knew mine. How is she? She, Margie? No. 2792. She's getting old. I saw this thing on TV one time. 
There are tribes where when a person gets old, they take him somewhere to die. I know. And that's what will happen to her. If it's a rule of life, my dear, we must accept it. Oh, I can accept it, but what bothers me is should be considered just a, a hunk of scrap metal. Nobody will ever know that she lived, that she was a living creature. You'll know. I'll know. Martha, I was right, wasn't I, about her? I'm, I'm right. Huh? Of course. When you rode with me, you could tell, couldn't you? Yes. You're not just saying this to make me feel better. I'm saying it because it's true. <laughs> She was a wonderful person, Martha. And she looked something like Margie. And maybe I fell in love with her. Because I thought this was how I wanted Margie to look when she reached 40. How Margie would be when she reached 40. Quiet. Sympathetic. That was the first night I didn't go home. I stayed with Martha. And early the following morning, I reported to the garage for work. Where's my bus, Joe? You'll have to take uh, out 2780 this morning, Eddie. You mean you're finally giving me a new transmission? Oh, that means you weren't here last night to do your daily dozen. What? 2792 is at it. What? There she is, against the back wall, what's left of her. What? What happened? Well, Jerry had an accident last night. It wasn't his fault. What happened? Well, these, these kids, they uh, must have been drunk, dope, who knows. They come right at him. So to avoid a head-on, he... Uh, Pulled over and piled up against the building. He crashed her. It couldn't be helped. Lucky he's got witnesses. Look. Look at 2792, Joe. She's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could put it that way. She's dead. And what happens to her now? She'll be stripped. I saw this thing on TV once. An animal, a big, beautiful animal. I forget what it was. Any, Anyhow, it died in the jungle... And the vultures and the hyenas. Oh, you really got yourself an imagination. He killed her. Jerry killed her. Oh, come on, Eddie. Hey, hey where are you going? You're doing the street in three minutes. Eddie! He killed her. He planned it with Margie. That was how Margie would get back at me. Well, 2792 was dead. I knew that. And I would give 2792 a burial... A decent departure from this world. But first she had to be avenged. Walking into a store saying, I want to buy that revolver. And, and then to go to Jerry's apartment. He wasn't home. But I should have thought of that. Of course. He'd be at my house. Eddie! Look, Eddie! You... Don't kill! Don't kill because of this! You really don't care! Eddie, don't kill! Why kill me, Eddie? You don't love her anymore. Why? You know why, Jerry. You're going to die because you killed her. I didn't kill anybody. Yes, Jerry. You killed 2792. Eddie! The two of you, you planned it. You did it to get back at me, to hurt me. You know how I loved her. No, Eddie, no. You yourself said it, Margie. An eye for an eye. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Eddie, I, uh, I heard something on the radio. Somebody heard shooting in your house. The cops found... I know. I know what they found. It can't be true. Now I have avenged her. I'm going to give her a decent burial. Hey, uh, uh let me, uh, let me get you something to drink. Hey, hey, wh where are you going with that can of gasoline? Out of my way. But you're crazy. I can't let you do that. You can't stop me. Oh. <sighs> No one can stop me. I heard the cops coming. They probably figured I'd be at the garage. But they were too late to stop me. I poured the gasoline all over her. All over my beautiful 2792. And I lit a match. found your best friend and your wife together, and in a fit of jealous rage, you killed them. You uh, returned to the garage. For some reason, the dispatcher tried to hold you for the police, and in the fight, a can of gasoline was spilled. Oh, doctor, you know better than that. You know why I killed Jerry. 
because they arranged to kill my boss. And I went back to the garage so that my 2792 could die with dignity. We, uh, we can try again tomorrow. We can try until forever, Doctor. What I've told you is the truth. There you have it. Either way you like it. We try to please everyone. Some stories have two endings. Ours has two storylines. Was he in love with the bus? And did he kill for that reason? Or did he realize that he was about to be betrayed by his wife and his best friend? And was that his motive? My motive is to have you wait here till I return. The popular song says, Love, your magic spell is everywhere. To which we might add, and in everything. There is an entire literature dealing with the love men have for the so-called inanimate artifacts in their lives. We have people who bestow more love and care upon guns than they could ever give to human beings. Captains who love their ships so dearly, they die with them. Who is to say? Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Bryna Rayburn, William Griffiths, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I, I don't follow this. Uh, put on the whiskers uh, and the goggles. Huh? What? What? Just do as I say. Uh, all right. Now there. Now, no one would ever dream you was Jupiter Dunlap. You just take off your clothes and, and put them on poor old Jake. And you put on Jake's clothes. Why? And we'll bury Jake. Bury him? Nobody knows about Jake except you and me. And them there two fellas, and, well, they're long gone. They ain't gonna say nothing. But we, we just can't go. I mean, we have to tell the sheriff. We will, in good time. Meanwhile, uh, you and poor old Jupiter Dunlap, you will have disappeared. Me? But why? Because we're going to let on that it was you that was murdered. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Time Magazine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.